Happy Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to label this as Weird Wednesdays from moving on. From this day forward, Wednesdays, I'm going to talk about weird, crazy stuff. But not from a perspective of spooky, ooky. Maybe sometimes from spooky, ooky. But I mean futuristic, weird things that we're facing coming down the pipeline. I don't know why my camera refuses to center my face. It's more comfortable in that spot. I'll go here. But let me say this to you. When you see articles that talk about the future of facilities management as a robot, it's worded deceptively. Because it's like, well, the future of facilities management is the Tesla bot. But when you start to think about what facilities management actually is, it's plumbing, heating and AC repair, it's tire repair, it's drywall, it's construction labor, is anything that has to do with maintaining a facility, whether it be uh, the facility itself where you have a trucking facility, where you have trucks operable, whether it be building management for an office building, whether it be all the way down to your normal rental property or your apartment complex. Do you understand what's coming down the pipeline? Now, I understand why Tesla's doing it because there's a worldwide race for this technology. Somebody has to be first. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and so they're fighting with people like Atlas Group and a whole bunch of other groups to be the first person to, to roll out the technology. And, I, and in so many ways, it's important that the right person be at the head of this technology. Could you imagine if Klaus Suave himself, Klaus was the one who was actually smart enough, could we know he's not smart enough? Klaus Schwab, the traitor, if he was smart enough to develop these robots himself, he would have a robot army barreling down on America. He would say, we are going into the most uncertain times there are and I am Klaus and my robot army will stomp on your face. So I understand what's going on. I believe that you understand what's going on, but the scary thing about it is, if robots is gonna be doing all that type of labor, we're moving into an environment where people won't have to work. Well, work, physical labor will be a choice. Not a necessity, but a choice. And when we move into an environment where physical labor is a choice, what happens to all the people who did the physical labor jobs? How are they employed? How do they make a living? And that's the one thing I don't see addressed as this technology is rolled out. I don't see it being addressed. And quite frankly, it is disturbing to me because you're on the left with a couple of choices. Either you're gonna dump money into education to where people are gonna get educated to the point to where they're gonna have some type of job that competes with the robots. Or it's kind of like what happened with manufacturing when industrial revolution happened and we started to create all these machines and machines start doing the work of a hundred men. Well, all you had to do was have somebody in there to supervise the machine and a maintenance crew in there to deal with the machine. But it was still in a factory setting where, I don't know, let's say you were making a freaking bread, peanut butter. Um, it was within the context. So it was pervasive, but it wasn't overall pervasive. It didn't penetrate in the words of Klaus Schwab. It hadn't penetrated every arm office of society. This here is going to penetrate every area of society. And so how do people earn a living? Outside of a universal basic income. I don't see a way for you to make a living outside of that. And just for the record, let me show you what they're saying these things will be used for. Watch this. Blah, 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 blah revolutionizing facilities management hold on let me move myself revolutionizing facilities management facility management faces a significant labor shortage 
covering everything from routine maintenance to complex repairs. Enter Tesla's Optimus Gen 2 robot with an advanced dexterity which allows it to handle delicate tasks with precision, fine motor skills that enable it to manipulate tools and equipment with human-like agility, and AI-driven capabilities. This robot is designed to perform tasks traditionally done by human workers, filling critical gaps in the workplace. Now hold on, man. I know plenty of people that want a job. Filling gaps in the workplace. I know plenty of people that want a job. Where's these gaps in the workplace at? Let's see the kind of things that it's gonna do. Optimus can perform, make sure you can see this. There it is. Optimus can perform a variety of essential tasks and facility manager from routine maintenance to complex repairs. Its advanced sisters and actuators enable it to handle precision work easily. For instance, it can chase, check and replace air filters, inspect building plumbing and electrical systems, and perform minor repairs autonomously. This means business, businesses can rely on Optimus to handle tasks that are tasks that are currently hard to staff due to labor shortages. Hmm. So the World Economic Forum broke the economy, sent all the people home, told them they couldn't work unless they got a jib jab. People said they weren't going to get a jib jab. They created labor shortages, and now we got robots coming in to replace the labor shortages. As a fruit inspector, I think this is a, the fruit we must keep our eyes on. And I think that as Elon walks around and he does these interviews, I think somebody's going to have to present this question to him. Elon, you're making bots, right? Let him talk more about his advanced robots. And Well, Elon, how does that affect the average working class man? And as your bots take over, what do they do for them? How do they make money? Someone has to present that question to him. Nobody does it because everybody's like, oh, I'm so happy I'm here with Elon and I'm interviewing Elon. And don't get me wrong, I like him. Somebody's going to have to present that question to him. We got to stop playing nice with everybody, man. Oh, believe me, when I get the opportunity, oh, I'm not going to play nice. I'm not finna play nice at all. You ain't got to worry about it. I'm not playing nice at all with nobody. I wants to know how this is going to be handled. In facilities management, Optimus is a game changer. Its ability to work autonomously and integrate with AI-driven diagnostic tools allows it to identify potential issues before they become major problems. For example, it can detect early signs of equipment failure and identify areas that require preventive maintenance. This proactive maintenance approach can prevent costly downtime and extend the lifespan of equipment and facilities, ensuring smooth and efficient operations. Human beings can do that as well. By automating repetitive and labor-intensive tasks, Optimus can significantly reduce labor costs. Its efficiency and precision, precision lead to improved operational performance and higher quality standards for businesses. This means better service delivery and enhanced customer satisfaction, all while cutting down on expensive rela expenses related to human labor. I don't see it. I don't see it. I mean, when you take Waymo, for an example, the whole driverless car thing and people getting in the cars and getting kidnapped. I mean, I just, I just don't see it. But the future that these type of technologies move us towards is a non-human future. Now, I can see if he said, hey, we're taking these damn robots right here, these robots. We're going to take these robots and we're going to Mars and we're going to explore Mars with our robots. We're going we're gonna to put robots on on uh, asteroids and the robots going to bring us back all kind of minerals and golds and silvers. I can see that. But we're moving in an environment where human beings are not lo no longer going to be met no longer going to be necessary. And I understand what the World Economic Forum is doing. See, if you don't do it yourself, but they fund it in China, then it moves forward either way it goes. So they're forcing the issue by financing and promoting it all promoting it all over the place and so it becomes an arms race to see who's going to get the most advanced thing first. 
Because whoever has the most advanced version of it is going to be in control. And therein lies the problem. That's a problem I don't know a solution to. I'm going to have to ponder this one. Because anytime anything falls in the wrong hands, we got a problem. Yeah, yeah, we got a problem. 